Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Hello out there, my audience for Hello Self Podcast. I am your host, Patricia Leonard. And as you all remember, or for you new comers, our mission is helping you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. So that means we're going to help you think how you can get those dreams and goals off your someday shelf and start living them right now. I have a guest today, and that's the way we give you information for you newcomers, is my guest talks about their life and their Hello Self moments that took them to where they are today and helped them meet their goals and dreams that they had. We don't always just take a highway straight there without any bumps. And my guest today will talk to you about that. My guest is Jean Ann Roberts. She is Mrs. DC America 2020. And I've got her on here because of that, but more about she has just launched her first book. It's never too late to find your crown. It was released in June of this year. And you can find it on Amazon. Barnes and Noble and Walmart. And I read this book and you're going to love it because she takes you through every step of getting to her dreams and her goals of being Miss, of of winning a crown. She's got lots of tips in there, but I think it's interesting to know Jean Ann was 55 and a stay at home mom who competed and won the crown of Miss DC America in 2020 at the height of the pandemic, where most of the women in the pageant were 30 years, she was 30 years younger than her. So in her book, she takes you on that journey from childhood. I give, I've given you just a brief bio, but I'm going to turn it over now to (laughs) my guest, you know me, I like to talk, to Jean Ann Roberts and let her tell your story. And we will have an interaction back and forth about what were the hello self moments that kept her going and created this t- trajectory of wanting to be a queen, a crown, wear a crown. So Jean Ann Roberts, welcome to Hello Self Podcast and... I'll let you tell the real story now, and it'll be a conversation because you know I'll butt in and ask a bunch of questions. <laughs> and then I want to highlight some of the things that she brings up. Jean and say hello to my audience and just start telling whatever part of your story you want to tell. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much, Patricia, for letting me, <clears throat> excuse me, come on and share my life story. And I really, truly feel like God had me write this book, It's Never Too Late to Find Your Crown, to inspire millions and the generations that failure is not final and it's never too late. And I want to say, starting off, my, my dream as a little girl was actually to get married, have children, and have a family. And that was my dream for a very long time. And it seems like God, he brings my dreams late in life. And I actually got married at the age of 40. And I won the crown at the age of 55. I want to start off with that when I was 17, I competed in my first pageant. And it was a fair pageant called Miss Magnolia Fair. And Great. My mom had actually competed in that pageant. She didn't win that crown, but I believe she should have won that crown. But back to the Miss Family Fair, my sister is 11 months older than me, and she competed. 
So she had won the year before. So I had asked my mom if I could compete. And my mom was hesitant about me competing because she was thinking, what if I didn't win the crown and my sister had just won the crown? But I just loved everything beauty and fashion. And I was a dancer and I was a majorette. And it was everything that I loved. So I convinced her and I ended up winning that Miss Sunday Fair. And then after that, the next year was another pageant called Miss Lingo County. And that one was a little bit different because you had to have a talent. So I picked, at the time, Rocky, the movie was really popular. And I was a dancer, but I pretended to be a boxer. So my granny, she made me a costume. She made me a life-size dummy that I actually ended up, I punched into the audience. And I used the song, Eye of the Tiger. And what I did not realize competing in that pageant and picking that song was that was truly going to be my life story that I just failed so many times, but in the end, victory prevailed. And that's the theme of all the Rocky movies. And really that's the theme of my life. And that is why I wanted to write this book and get people motivated to see that God puts these dreams in our heart. And he has an assignment for each of us. With the Miss Mingo County pageant, I won that pageant also. And it just seemed so easy. And I was like, wow, I'm just getting these crowns is really easy. Then <laughs> it changed. I ended up from the Miss Mingo County pageant, I went to the state pageant. And that was a whole different ball game, but I wasn't prepared for that. And I really didn't have anyone guiding me to let me know what to do. And so when I got there, I, I didn't even place. And what happened was, I didn't realize it at the time, but my dream was really my mom's dream. And this is where it gets emotional. I know. I'm going to cry. <laughs> because oh when I didn't even, I didn't win the crown and I, I didn't even place in this pageant. And it was, you know, when you think of something devastating, that might not seem devastating to a regular person. But when you have a dream and that's all you have and you think that's the only thing that's going to get you to your dream and you don't win that crown, your whole life, you feel like your whole life has fallen apart. And at that moment, when I saw the look on my mom's face, <laughs> it's still, this is like 30, 38 years later, I still remember it. And it was, she was, I thought she was disappointed and she was disappointed for you. She was disappointed for me, yes. but I thought she was disappointed in me and it really influenced my entire life. And we did not speak about pageantry again for 36 years. Oh. So that's where I want to go with the story is that God sees your buried dreams. And even when we've forgotten our dreams, God hasn't forgotten. And he is going to give you that dream in his time. So this story gets really amazing. Um, I had been a stay-at-home mom for 15 years. And I told my husband, I was 55, and I said, my kids were, they were like nine and 12 at the time. And I said, or not 15 years, so I was staying at home mom for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And I said, I want to try to pursue my dream again as a model because I had done modeling off and on throughout my 30s. And because I was a full-time flight attendant, I really didn't have the opportunity to pursue it. So I said, I know this is crazy, but I'm going to try this again. 
And it, it might be too late, but... Lean in, let me interrupt there. What was the hello self moment within you that said, I'm going to do this again? What was that? Okay, I ended up working at Swarovski because my husband's job ended after 25 years. So he took a year off, a, a sabbatical. And I said, I want to do something. So... I, I wanted to do something close to home, but I wanted to do something that was in the beauty world. And I love, I love everything. Like I said, fashion and I love Swarovski. I love everything that sparkles. So they had an opening and I got that job. What was happening is when people were coming into the store, they were saying to me, you should be the model representing this brand. And it wasn't one time. It was over and over. And I thought, oh my goodness, maybe I still have the beauty yes. to get to this dream. Maybe age really is a number. Society mm -hmm. tells you that if you're over the age of 50 as a woman, that you're not beautiful anymore. And that was, I was getting a different story. This was from the heavenly realm, obviously. Yes. And so that's where... I got that hello moment that God spoke to me and it's not over. Like your assignment isn't finished. So that's when my husband and I, we found, we, re we researched, we found the right photographer. We went to New York. We got pictures, came back and I submitted for a job on Fox 5 thinking it was a modeling job. And it was a modeling job, but the lady that was in charge of it, she was the state director for Miss, Miss DC America. And she was looking for her contestants to run for 2020. And so when I walked into the studio, I saw this beautiful lady. She had on this black tulle skirt and a red top. And she just looked like a princess. And she said to me, you're going to be my next Mrs. DC America. And I, my breath was taken away. I was like, I think I might be too old. But at the same time, I was thinking, this is a buried dream from 36 years ago. And she said, no, she goes. Yes. No. And another thing I'd like to just say there, because that is a hello self moment. Because normally we will talk ourselves out. Oh, no, this is ridiculous. She's just being nice. So audience, we will talk ourselves out of that. And perhaps you have when you've had opportunities because you thought your age or I'm not good enough or I'm not pretty enough. Listen to what Jean Ann is telling you because these are very important things for you to put in your psyche now and Ask God to help you find the way. Yeah. Okay. Sorry to keep interrupting, but oh my gosh, these are fabulous learning lessons and encouraging lessons. But hello, self moments, if we pay attention, can take us to the next step of what God has planned. Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I think the hello, self moments are actually, to me, the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly right. If you're walking with God and you're a believer and you're following his path, then he's going to lead you to, he says, I will give you more than you ever dreamed or imagined if you follow me. So that statement is very true. That's exactly right. Um, we, if we pay attention those hello self moments are God speaking to us about the next step. And one thing about Jean Ann's book, and we will talk more about that, but I don't know if you can see this. I never know how this thing that, oh, wait, but we will have there. It's never too late. To find. In there, she starts every paragraph with a, a biblical verse of some type that's encouraging and motivating. And they can be hello self moments for you too. But oh my God. Oh, okay. I'm going to stay out of this. I can't stay out. I'm a year right on <laughs> with the things. But yes, pay attention, audience. <laughs> so I went home and I asked my husband if I could compete 
for Miss DC America 2020. And the problem was that there was a fee of $750. And we had just spent a lot of money getting my pictures in New York for my modeling. And he said, I thought your dream was modeling. And I said, I have a lot of dreams. And I said that the beauty, being a beauty queen is in the, in that world. It's in the beauty world. And he didn't even know about my first two crowns because I never talked to him about it. And the thing was, he was very, he's an accountant. So he's very level-headed and he's, everything's planned. And he said, I just think you should stay on this one path. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, so I just let it go for a minute. Mm -hmm. And then a month later, she called me again, the director and wanted me to be on another modeling segment for the spring, spring attire. And, or it actually was a couple months later. And she said, I really want you to run for Mrs. DC. She said, you can actually get sponsors. So I had to be the dentist the next day. And I asked my dentist if he would sponsor me. Oh, wow. And he deserved, he believed I deserved a crown and he sponsored me. And he really believed in me. And then from that point on, my husband, he was, he was fine with it because it, it was, it was just the money thing, but it worked out and it really was truly God's plan because when it's God's plan, it's easy. You don't have to force it. It just all falls into place. And then I really focused on, I knew because I had lost that pageant because because I wasn't prepared, that state pageant from 36 years ago, I said, I'm going to hire a pageant coach. I'm going to make sure that I am prepared for the state pageant. And I really was like Sylvester Stallone when he can, when he was fighting and getting ready to compete for his boxing matches. That's truly how I felt. I was like, I am going to win this. I'm going to win this. I'm not going to, I know how it feels to lose. And I was, I had all my life experience had prepared me for this moment. Yes. And I was ready for it. So I competed against five other women. Everybody was in the workforce. I was the only stay-at-home mom. And I do believe, I'm not saying these women, but I think in general, there's a lot, Not I don't even want to say in general, there are people that think if you're a stay-at-home mom that you're not really qualified. And, but people do not know the power of a mom because a mom can do 20 things at once. Yes. And it, I feel like that even helped me to get that crown being a mom. And I just, when I, when they got ready to call my name, I heard God speak to me and he spoke to me twice in my life. The first time was over a boyfriend situation that was very dangerous and he was not happy with me. And that ended then as soon as he spoke. And then the second time was when I I was about to, they were about to call my name and they said, you are anointed. God said, you are anointed and appointed. And I had won three crowns and the first two crowns I didn't realize God is the bestower of crowns. And when he puts that crown on your head, it's for a reason. And he wants you to glorify his name. And I knew that that third crown, I knew what, when he said that, he wanted me to glorify his name. Mm -hmm. So that's how it all began. And your book definitely does that. It go And back to Stallone, you made a comment in here because I like him too, Sylvester Stallone. He's got that rough and tough attitude about him, but a heart. But she quoted in her book, Jean Ann quoted in her book, Stallone stated, nothing punches harder than life. And I, and that is so true. 
sometimes we think we got knocked down and we can't get up again. But we have to get up again because there's still more. I know my family say, sis, when are you going to retire? I said, I've already done it twice. How often do I have to? <laughs> I don't want to miss a thing in life. And you are inspiring me. <laughs> Not only our audience, but you're inspiring me to just say, Patricia, just keep living. And I think what has happened, and Jean and this is a major shifting in our universe right now. I know 2020 seemed like a tough time, and it was a tough time for a lot of people, but it's exactly what God needed to put us through because it made us love each other more, not get all caught up in the things that we think are important and family. And another thing that you said is stay-at-home moms. And we need to shift that. So if any of you are stay-at-home moms, this is shifting. I had a client that had never worked in the workplace. Her children were off to college now. And she came to me. She said, Patricia, I, I want to get back in the work environment. However, I really don't have any skills. I've never worked there. I said, sit down. Did you do budgeting in your family? Oh, yes. I, I took care of the groceries and the bills and things. I said, okay, did you ever work on any PTO meetings for your kids? Oh, yes, I was the fundraiser. Anyway, we went through all of these. At the end, she had all of these skills. And I said, what do you want to do now? You got this. And she said, I'd like to be in marketing. I think I'm good at that. Guess what she got? Right out of the second interview, she got a job in so it's never over till we say it's over. And I love that you found your husband was, and I understand his priorities too, because money is an issue that's that we have to pay attention to. But I love that didn't stop you. And so we can't let those kind of things stop us. She had a hello self moment at the dentist. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Would you sponsor? Yes. There's always other avenues if we pay attention. Oh, my God. You have given us uh, so much. What do you, when you say it's never too late to find your ground, what do you mean f from a standpoint of somebody that's not going for Miss America or a particular pageant? What is the message you have there, Jean? The message is that, God has an assignment for every single person and he might have many assignments until the day you are not able to get up again and God takes you to heaven. He has an assignment for you and a dream and he puts that in your heart. And like I said, it could be like, you don't have 20 assignments in your lifetime. You could have one assignment in your lifetime, but he wants to give God wants to give everyone the dream. He wants to give us not just the dream, but more than what we ever dreamed or imagined. So that is really my message that people need to not listen to society and not listen to the neighbors and not listen to whoever is giving you this negative, not negative, that's, God has God has a plan. And when you feel that feeling in your heart, and if it's truly from God, every single door will open. Yeah, sometimes it could take a long time. I I didn't meet my husband until I was 38. And I didn't have my children until I was 41 and 43. And I didn't win the crown until I was 55. And I'm still trying to climb the mountain to become a supermodel. And I know it sounds absolutely crazy, no. but I feel like we wear clothes too. And I don't, I think beauty is ageless. And I think our society, like I want to change the fashion world. I want to change that way of thinking that it, you can only be 15 to 25 to be beautiful. And believe me, my daughter's 15 and she is the most beautiful girl 
to me in the whole world. But I feel like somebody that's 55 has a different beauty. And why can't we celebrate everybody's beauty at every age? There's a model right now that's 93. And she's a famous model. I think her name is Carmen. And she's walking the runway. She's I'm talking. She is walking for the top fashion brands in the world. So right there tells me it's not too late. We're shifting in society, Jean, and I agree with you 100%. We are, I have so many people that say it's over for me. It's too late. I don't have enough money. I'm not good enough. I didn't come from the right group of people. I'm not that things are shifting in our society. And I always go back to this same model. Stephen, I come from the corporate world, and Stephen Covey talks about the circle of influence. And this is exactly what you're doing now with your life, continuing uh, influencing yourself, but also mm -hmm. reaching out to others because he says that everything begins with us that little, that main circle. And then as we do our thing and step out, take those hello self moments and step out and say, I didn't know if I could do it, but I did it. We impact others because you are beautiful, Jean Ann, and people see mm -hmm. that, oh my God, she didn't even get married till she was this age, mm -hmm. or she didn't have the ground till she was this age. This is encouraging that the old tapes that we've been living by and yeah. put ourselves in prison by no longer are valid with the world that we're facing now. And I, that is, oh my gosh, that is so exciting because some of my best friends, it's probably true to you, like you said about your daughter, is some of my best friends are in their 20s and 30s. I go and plan a fitness and they're my social circle now. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. This is right on. And you see that crown? <laughs> Everybody wears a crown, she said, if you want. But it may not always look like a crown like that. But somebody thinks you're great. And that's your crown, yeah. Oh my God, Jean Ann, you're giving so many... Think sometimes you laugh and it was, sometimes you must laugh and adjust your crown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's that statement mean? I had, when I won the crown, uh -huh. my state director actually tried to take it from me. And I had gone to New York and got gotten pictures and used a makeup brand that wasn't at the time, see, I had just won the crown and she had just started her own lashes and she did some eyeshadow and it wasn't even a full line of makeup. And I had never signed a contract with her that I was supposed to wear her makeup, especially when I'm going to New York and that makeup artist, they're hired to put on their yeah. makeup. Yeah. So there was a lot of things going on there where this wasn't like I went there and purposely put on somebody else's makeup. And when I got back from New York and I posted my picture, which is my most iconic picture I have from Mrs. DC America 2020, I used that picture for all my, it's on my book. It's on my book. That's yeah. how it's so anointed, that picture. And her, she had her assistant call me and say that I wore another brand of makeup, which was against the contract that wasn't in the contract. And they had me sign a, like they were going to give me three chances. So that was my first chance. That was also not in the contract that I was going to be, there was going to be three chances. So what happened was she didn't realize that my whole family is attorneys. Besides myself and my two sisters, everybody, my cousins, my aunts, my uncles. And I said to, I sent the contract to both of my brothers. They read it. They said it was very vague. And they said from here on out that if she has any more problems, 
to have them contact them and they will take care of it. And I told her I'm the assistant and I was never threatened again. And I wore my crown with honor. See there, she, I heard oh, Jean Ann, thank you for all of these notices. But so sometimes and, you have to adjust. Yes. You have to adjust your crown. Yes. And Jean Ann just talked about the reality of life. Once you get out there and you did your dream, other people are, I call it jealous, and they'll do whatever. I don't know if that's jealousy, but I, I don't know. They're always trying to do stuff like that to knock your crown off your head in whatever way, either with your emotional self, your heart self, or through your financial. So I think that these are hello self moments also that not everybody's our cheerleader. Not everybody. Um, I don't know if it's that they want more. Some people have told me that, oh, they're just jealous. They're just, but I don't know what it is, but we have to be aware that people may not try to knock the crown off your head and whatever your crown is if it's a book and somebody says no that's not a very good book or you decided to play pickleball and you're not very good at it and somebody says you'll never be good at pickleball whatever you decide um there's a lot of times people there that will yeah try to rain on your parade i that's why my saying is I walk between the raindrops in life. I'm not letting anything rain on my parade. Right. I mean, it was, I have to say, it was really like so hurtful because that was the lady that bring my very dream back to life. Yeah. And unfortunately, it wasn't. God used her. God still used her. Sometimes God uses people yes, that but- you could least expect right right? point but just for that moment just for that moment and I wish her the best and I'll always be grateful to her for giving me the opportunity to compete and winning that crown that truly changed my life changed my family's life and hopefully inspired thousands that it's not scary (laughs) it's changing the life of other people Just this moment on this podcast, you are changing somebody's life. Everything we do. Yes. Oh my. I really, I really hope so. And my book, I feel like there's so much confusion now in the world. And we really, God is missing. And we just need to go back to God and the Ten Commandments. And and that's what's happening. And I really want to bring through my book people back to God and to Jesus. And when you go back there and you live your life with walking with him, obviously it's still, we're on the earth where there's going to be hardship. There's going to be heartache, um, but it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah. It's going to be a lot. And this is very interesting. Jean Ann and I came together through the introduction of another young lady, only 17 years old. And so our society is waking up. And then I found a woman that I, first of all, the little 17 year old and I are just, she is fabulous. So mature for her age in many ways. And she saw the gift in Jean Ann. So she is awake, this young, she's a performer too. And she's awake. And then when Jean Ann and I talked, it was like we knew each other. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking that God is bringing people together. Well, first of all, for what he the changes that he needs next. And secondly, I don't know if we've been together before, but we have mm-hmm. common interests and common goals in different areas. I pageantry. I like television, acting, communication. I think we're all doing it in our own ways because I believe that the future is about the arts and not words. I'm going to corporate America to 
<laughs> we have that too. But it's just like we knew each other. And I had a gentleman on last week before last, and he was quoting God just like you, Jean Ann. So yeah. There are many more, yeah, many more people waking up. Um, I don't know. I, I'm never too late to get your crown. God wants to give you the fairy tale dream that you have. You think it's a fairy tale dream, but it's something that he put in your heart. Yes. A long time ago. Yes. Where are you going from here, Jean Ann, in your dreams and goals? And Okay. I just went to New York a couple of days ago to get pictures with a photographer, which this is a full circle moment. This photographer took my pictures 25 years ago before he was famous. And I was not even married at the time. I didn't have kids yet. And he took the iconic picture that really led me to New York to be, I, I competed for the face of Avon. I didn't book that job, but I booked many jobs through the pictures he took of me 25 years ago. And then when I got married, then I let that dream go thinking I was never going to revisit it. And throughout this, this journey, I got those pictures four years ago, which opened the door to Mrs. DC America. And I told my husband that I wanted, I got a referral for this new photographer. And I said, I want to go to him. He takes the pictures of people on Vogue, even incredible. So when I walked in, he said to me, I think I've taken your picture before. And I said to him, did you happen to take pictures 25 years ago for an agency in Baltimore called Nova? And he said, yes. And I showed him the picture and he said that was his, that he took that. And I thought this is another moment that God ordained to happen. And like I said, he has like 325K followers now. And I am waiting for my pictures right now so I can start submitting because I told him I wanted to submit for Lancome, Estee Lauder, Swarovski, um, Versace, Gucci, Chanel. And now in a couple of weeks, I'm going to have the right pictures to hopefully get me in the right agency in New York City. And that way I can book the jobs, the beauty commercials. And I would like to walk the runway all over the world for all these famous designers and make money, make millions so I can help what's, which is closest to my heart, human trafficking. Oh. And I would like to stop this horrific crime and how, what a most, what a wonderful way to do that by doing something you love and you're passionate about, and then being able to give back and help the world. That's what I would love. That would be my ultimate dream. Yes. And you will do it. You will do it. Thank you so much for your faith in me. Because, you know, it's really a tough world out there, especially the fashion world. And I'm just going to ignore the naysayers and keep on going. Absolutely. We have to learn. And I'm going through that again is to surround myself with supportive people in my life or people that have a similar vision or like the trafficking. Whatever your mission is, what get around those people that are doing that. And modeling is one way to be seen by the world. Yes. Yes. I didn't I, I think God wants us to use our passion and... He wants us to occupy the territory. He wants us to reoccupy. We have lost our Christianity, our values. It's gone right now in America. Yes. And we need to get it back. And that's the only way we're going to ultimately, everybody individually succeed is putting God first. 
and loving one another. We are so divided now. Yes. If you're black, you're this. If you're Asian, you're this. If you're Caucasian, you're this. And oh, it's so easy to love. So easy. yes, God is love. Like you said, that is faith, hope, and love. But of all of it's these, the love is the greatest. Yes. yes. And you're right on track. Yes. You and I, oh, this is, it's interesting. The pe- Okay, I've narrowed down the tribe of people that I've always been connected to. Doesn't mean that I don't like them. Doesn't mean it, God says we're together for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. And we'll always be together for a lifetime. But sometimes as we take this journey, it's a group, it's a new group of people. And that's what I'm finding about myself. And I don't know how we're going to, but we will continue. You and I will continue to be connected in some way. I don't know. But if we're not, this is the, we're looking at the purpose, the common purpose that we have along the way, because those are the things that are going to shift our society and others who have questions about what is my purpose? So many people say that. Oh my goodness. And the thing is, what happens is when you get out of that box, Mm -hmm. people will start saying, oh my gosh, look at her. She's crazy. She's this, that. And then (laughs) when you make it in whatever you're doing, then people are like, how did you do it? And then they want to be right there with you. Yes. And and that really is life. That's life. Yes. And I told my sister, because I'll go for a walk and I'll talk to the birds and God while I'm talking. (laughs) And I said, now, sis, if you ever see me in an orange outfit with my hands behind my back, it's because somebody saw me talking (laughs) as I was walking along with no cell phone, just talking. And they'll say, this woman's lost it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Because that's exactly what I do. I talk to God all the time. If he gives me a coin, nobody will. Uh, people say, why do you bend over to pick up a penny? I say, that's God confirming that I'm with you, Patricia. Keep going. I'm with you. It's and just t- our little saying. Yeah. On the penny, it says, in God we trust. Yes. I, or, that's another good point. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I'm, oh my gosh, this is so fabulous. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what are some other things that as we begin to close out, you told me what your next step is. And, oh, I know Jean Ann is here today for several reasons for this Hello Self podcast. And I'm grateful that she was willing mm-hmm. to come on because... We had a lot of trouble getting on here today. Yes. The technology, and we both had to pray. God help us. (laughs) Because we're not either one super techie. But isn't that funny? She didn't give up, and I didn't give up, and we made it. We made it. And I am so grateful for me, but most of all for you, my audience, because that's what we serve is that you will see those things that you say you can't do, you can do, and that you need to get your dreams off and start living them now. But another thing that I wanted to bring up about Jean Ann, I have High Heels Cabaret show, a TV show that I produce here in Nashville, Tennessee, and it's about people that every age, it's every, it could be somebody reading from a book, poetry, pantomime, singing, dancing, telling their story, whatever they decide to do. I've had some in their 70s. She read from Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. <laughs> he taught him about life, remember, in all his sonnets. But I think that you don't want to miss that. And what happens is we shoot the show then we'll edit it and then we'll put it out there. And when it's out on the local channels, just be, it's with the Nashville Library and the Technical College here. 
And once it's posted out there on Comcast and all the social media sites, just like this is, it's on all the social media sites and my website, then Jean Ann will get a copy of the show too, however she wants to use it. But I am so excited to have her on there because I think she's got a message that the world needs to hear. And the more we can get it out there, the more she can help, not only with the abused, but also with some of you who maybe abuse yourself by not living up to your potential or your dreams. That's the next time that she and I will come together. And I think this is very interesting. I love that her husband supports her. It takes a community. Yes, my husband is my prince. And I want to tell people too that love is not, I, that saying, don't rush love. I understand that now. I tried to rush it so many times and I went through so much heartache and I tried to make people like men like fit into that puzzle mm. and it never was the right person. And I want to say that God really, he gave me the right person. The per He truly, Paul was meant to be my husband and God really showed me this through the fact that my name is Jean Ann. His dad's name is Jean and his mom's name is Ann. And right there was like confirmation that this was truly my Prince Charming. And you know what I love that she said when she went to him about one thing, he's an accountant and he's a money thinker. And, but you see what happened just because somebody doesn't maybe they can be your biggest advocate too because he said that's a lot of money but guess what she found it in other ways because god provided another way it didn't make her husband stop it just simply caused her to go in a new direction so you don't have to let what somebody else says at the moment say oh okay you're not you don't support me no he is still a supporter and i love that because she said we're friends, and I think that's the best advertisement for love that you can have, is to be the best of friends. Okay, Jean Ann, is there <laughs> anything you want to say to the audience? We will post everything that we've been talking about out on all the social media sites, my website. Jean Ann will get a copy. But it'll be out there on Spotify, all of them. I don't even know all of them. But uh, my podcaster will make sure that these get posted out there. And then when those go out, if you want to get a hold of Jean Ann, are you open to talking to others if they contact you? Yes, that would be fine. Through Instagram, you're on there? Yes, I'm on Instagram. It's jeanann.roberts. They could also contact me through my email, which is jeanann.roberts at gmail.com. And those would be my two best contacts. Okay. And we will have all that information on the posting out there so you can see it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank can I say you. one more thing? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. I just want to end by saying and letting the audience know that destiny truly belongs to the underdogs. Yeah. I know this. I have lived a lifetime and I'm just so glad that I didn't give up. And, and I'm not even saying, I actually think I did give up on my dream of being a beauty queen after I lost at the age of 18. but. It was destiny. And even if you give up and if it's destiny, nothing's going to stop it. Yeah. So to all the people out there, go get that dream. <laughs> yeah. Find your crown regardless of what age you are. It's, yes. Yeah. Look at, look how beautiful she is. Her crown, her necklace. She is a beauty queen, but that's not just on the outside, as you all have witnessed today. 
that beauty is on the inside too. Thank God mm -hmm. for people like you. And thank you so much for coming on the po Hello Self podcast and sharing your story that others might be able to do something with their life that they dreamed of, regardless of what age you are. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much. And as we're closing out, we always go this way. Thank you, audience, for listening. And don't forget, life is not over until you say it's over or until God says it's over. Hello Self is, again, about helping you turn your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I'm Remember what I always say, get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf. I am your host, Patricia Leonard with Hello Self Podcast. Keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.